Lesson number four, the hidden powers of man and his brain. Tonight we're going to deal with not breathing exercises, but with the breath in general, to see the hidden powers that are within man himself. When I mark Matthew 13, 52, you read these words. He said to them, Every scribe who has become a disciple of the realm of heaven is like a householder who produces what is new and what is old from his stores. That is to say that within himself there is the past that is his experiences, that is his old material. But the new material is always giving expression to itself and is always being renewed and that storehouse is within man himself. Our experiences are good for us, but if we depend upon them for our creativeness, then we are lost. We limit ourselves because of our experiences. But if we look to that which is ever renewing itself, it is an intelligence that is behind all creation. And we find this renewal is continuous every second, every split second, because when that split second is past, it is memory. It is an experience. But yet that which is ever renewing itself is eternal and ever-present. And it is this that the Master meant, that when, uh, when he said, it produces what is new and what is old uh, from his stores. Therefore, within man himself <clears throat> remains the great power in which God created the instrument through which he himself could manifest. And as Jesus said these words, it brings us back to the realization of the truth. I myself am nothing but the spirit of the Father within me that performs these deeds. <clears throat> and when we really realize this great truth, we'll lose the limitations of the self. We'll begin to discern the self in all the ways of the self. And when we begin to know ourselves, then we will find we will lose these things. They will just dissolve away. And then we know ourselves thoroughly and properly, our actions, our thoughts, our motives, and so forth. There is something <clears throat> that remains, <coughs> which is eternal, which uh, cannot be discerned, but yet is the only reality. That which you can discern, you will see, is not real. And that the self is known, and all the ways of the self is known then there is the means of reaching that which is beyond the self. If you can grasp my meaning, I cannot give you, give you this truth as it were on a plate, because the truth is within yourselves, and you have to find it out, your way, not my way. But if I can show you how it can be done, Therefore, it is for you to apply it. The application is with you and not with me. <coughs> we have seen that breathing maintains perpetual contact between the vital currents in the body and the boundless reservoir of energy in which we live and move. The breath maintains that contact between the external energies and the internal energies, which are one. It is the magic link which that we have with the ocean of life called prana. Pranayama is the controlling of this energy in a way that makes it function according to the will. Prana is a word <coughs> that the masters have given to this invisible energy or universal energy which you can use, which the consciousness uses for creation. The consciousness of God is in the consciousness of man. And when man realizes this, 
he will find that it is truly what the Master said, it's the Spirit of the Father within me that doeth these things. And it is this consciousness that you become aware of as the creativeness within yourselves, and you know that this other energy will respond, just as this energy which we call prana is a form of ether. In the Western world we call it the ether of space. It's an energy that permeates the whole universe. It interpenetrates everything that exists. It flows through the very atoms. And with your own thought you create certain vibrations which are electromagnetic in nature, which magnetize this ether, just as you magnetize the ether when you broadcast to a broadcasting station, <clears throat> you magnetize the ether with the sound wave. That sound wave is increased to an intensity of 160,000 miles per second. <clears throat> Therefore, it magnetizes the ether at once in every part of the universe, every part of the world, that you can hear the broadcast at the same time everywhere. This same substance, which we know as prana, the ether of space, you do the same thing with your own thoughts. You create with your thought an electromagnetic wave that permeates and magnetizes the ether and has the effect of passing through the very cores of the atoms. The very walls of the atoms are affected by these waves. That's why we know that our thoughts affect our bodies. But not only our bodies. They go into our environment and out into the atmosphere and <clears throat> affect every living soul. Every living soul is affected by your thinking. And according to the intensity of your awareness, according to your realization of your consciousness, so is the power of your thought. So pranayama is a name given to the controlling of this energy in a way that makes it function according to the will. Now it is the soul that breathes and not the body. <clears throat> when the soul leaves the body, Breathing in the body ceases, but breathing does not cease. It is carried on in the finer ethers in which the soul exists. The spirit atma or Christ is the eternal and everlasting you. It cannot be discerned. Yet this is the power behind all things, discerning all things. <clears throat> when we see this and understand the spirit atma, or Christ. We begin to realize what the master could do and how he did it. He did it by a means of a law which is inherent in every human being. Because God is born, this Christ is born in every living soul. <clears throat> That's why Jesus said, the spirit of the Father within me, it doeth these things. I am in you, and you are in me, and we are in the Father. Therefore, there is no division anywhere. And because of this, we see clearly <clears throat> that this, this Christ within begins to know itself. Then the outer self, <clears throat> which is the small self, dissolves away. I have myself, I am nothing. It's the Spirit of the Father within me that doeth these things. When the consciousness is aware of itself, that is, when the consciousness is no longer bound or limited through belief, creeds and the external, it is free and knows itself to be. To be. Therefore, it is a purifying process that the mind and body must go through so that the vital currents are no longer obstructed. What is it that obstructs the vital currents of the body? Confusion, of course. Confusion in the mind means confusion in the body, because is the body not mind materialized? Science has proved to us that matter separated from energy does not exist. 
This energy separated from it in intelligence does not exist because it performs certain activities and laws according to that, that complete state of itself, inherent within itself, to perform these things. It carries waves of any kind, which would be a wave of a, of a thought, and that is a wave of thought of happiness, joy, and peace. It'll create, it'll carry a wave of depression, of anger and hate. It'll do these things because of its inherent law. The responsibility remains with you. What kind of way do you set out into the atmosphere? This subtle electromagnetic power called prana is the agency of all motion in the universe. <clears throat> it's the means through which all motion in the universe takes place. It's the bridge between the consciousness and the manifestation. So when the consciousness thinks, because the consciousness being created, sets in motion electromagnetic waves in the ether, and then we see the manifestation. Therefore, it is, the, it is the agency of all motion in the universe, no matter what it may be. It is a force when combined with thought and is as limitless as the limitless power of, limited thought, of, of limitless thought. It responds to the boundless will which is inherent in man, yet the uninitiated are unaware, unaware of it. It is as subtle as the essence of life so terrific in its rendering power as to reach the stars. This force is, is not God, but men have learned the secret of subjecting it to their will when necessary. For God has granted unto man the power to act upon this colossal and vast force which is behind all nature. That is the master. The master then is one who uses who understands the power of his own consciousness being created. He then knew and knows what this vast colossal force can do. Therefore, he applies according to the law. He knows perfectly well that ether will respond because it can't help doing so. That is why it is there. It carries good or bad. It carries the thought, ignorantly or knowingly, unconsciously or consciously. Ether responds to mind and forms according to the image of the mind. Ether is the basis of matter and the framework in which matter is built. <clears throat> the main physical center in the body is the cerebellum. The, and the medulla of the gut at the base of the skull. This center is the central switch where the vital centers of respiration, blood circulation, heartbeat, gland secretion, muscle tension and relaxation and many other internal functions of the body are situated. I showed you before, <coughs> the other night, where this portion of the brain was and those who attended my lectures on how to relax and revitalize themselves, found this particular portion of the brain the most important in the life, because if they thought a certain thing about the body, it passed through that brain, that portion of the brain, the cerebellum, and passed out into the body according to the waves of energy set in motion. <coughs> Then, it also was the organ to receive messages back from the body. So when the body talked back to the body, this brain felt these feelings and give to the cerebellum, the cerebrum, the thinking portion of the mind, an interpretation of what that feeling was. If you accepted that as a reality, then the vicious circle began in operation. You then felt these things and you believed them to be true. But if you, knowingly, knowing that these things had no power at all except the power you gave them, because you were the creator of them, no matter 
who you thought created them, who caused this upheaval in you, whether it was somebody outside yourself. It was your responsibility and your reaction. If you knew and understood, you would not react the way you do. But because of the self, because you are not free, therefore you will react to conditions. Only freedom will enable you to, re to react wisely and with wisdom. Without freedom, you cannot act wisely and with wisdom. For the simple reason, you're caught up in the net of the self. You're caught up in all your emotions and ideas and beliefs. These beliefs are not true. They have no existence in truth. They're but a belief in your mind. What is in your mind is self-creating. What is beyond your mind is not self-creating. But it is creativeness in itself. And that's where the consciousness is. And when the consciousness becomes aware of it, then consciousness becomes creative. And it knows clearly and distinctly that all his reactions and conditions of the body and mind is his own responsibility. No matter who you put the blame on, external to yourselves, you are the one that reacts. You are the one that is caught up in your reaction. You are the one that feels. You are the one that creates those conditions and no one else. You are alone response. Now I showed you the other day and the other night <coughs> we saw plainly that there was this portion of the brain, the frontal portion of the brain, and we saw also that there was this, also this other portion of the brain here. <coughs> we also saw that there was the medulla of the data here. <coughs> this portion of the brain runs about this distance. And it's got to do with your action, external action. That is to say, what you think and what you feel. And uh, when you want to move your hand or your body or a particular thing, you, you create this activity through in this area of the brain. It's the thinking portion that carries these messages through the nerves of your body right out into the muscles which do act. And these muscles act according exactly how you think. There's a mechanism ready to move at a moment's notice. It's a switch and move. The whole mechanism moves according to your direction. Therefore, I showed you before that in this portion of the brain you had a center. In this portion of the brain you had also a center. And in this portion of the brain you had also a center, which makes up both the, the, the cerebrum, cerebellum and the oblong duct. We saw clearly then, life is eternal. We saw also that this life of the Father, which is eternal, is the same life in the Son, which the Son becomes aware of, in that center of recognition. Therefore, he becomes aware of his own consciousness, becomes aware of how to think and act. And he sends his messages through this brain onto the second, and down through here is the fusing of mind and matter. Mind and matter becomes active together through this center of the whole of the body. <coughs> there is all performed with energy. Without ether interpenetrating all these cells, you could have no movement whatsoever. Ether is the energy. Prana is the energy in every cell that gives it life. Prana is the energy in every cell of the, of the nervous system which gives it activity. <coughs> Without prana, you could have no activity whatsoever. So that's what you see. <coughs> the Father is the light. The same light in the Son. And the Son's ex complete expression becomes the Holy Ghost, the cracked expression of the Son, knowing the Father. That is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Father is the light, the 
Zion is the expression of that life of Christ. And the Holy Ghost is the manifestation of the Son in completeness according to the divine perfectness. As he said, Father hath life in himself, and he grants the Son to have the same life. Now we see that the cerebellum, the medulla, is the at the base of the skull. This center is the central switch, where the vital center of respiration, blood circulation, heartbeat, gland secretion, muscle tension, relaxation, and many other internal functions of the body are situated. There are various breasts that have the desired effect in establishing equilibrium between the exhalation and inhalation, which <coughs> produces the quickening and set of certain activities in the body. But at this stage, it would be unwise to try them. When the breath is held without strain, letting it out very slowly through the mouth, as if whistling or blowing, it strengthens the vocal cords of the larynx with the power to produce perfect sound, which is so essential in creating harmony in mind and body and producing certain phenomena through thought and sound. The breath itself is of little value, except when the mind is aware of what is being, what is taking place, because the consciousness itself is a controlling factor of all energies. So when the breath is being passed out slowly and deliberately uh, through the mouth, after the air is absorbed in a long, deep breath, such as this. And then slowly it is allowed to go out. At the same time, as it's flowing out, you see, there must be no strain of any kind. If there was a strain of any kind, you will notice that I wouldn't be able to speak, because I'd be looking for breath. I would try to get my breath again. But the fact is that when there is a strain at the beginning, there is a strain at the end. Therefore, your vocal cords would not be strengthened. But with the easy, relaxed condition of the breath and the power of the prana, which is passing through the throat with the breath, intensifies the power of the vocal cord. These vocal cords then become more, as it were, tuned, so that you can create a sound with the combination of the thought and the sound together. Because thought traveling at the rate of 186,000 miles per second <coughs> is invisible in nature, is invisible because of its high velocity. But the sound travels at the rate of 750 miles per second. It's a per hour, as you say, 750 miles per hour. So therefore, you see, that is the plane on which you physically act. Your hearing and the manifestation of all matter, the sound of that matter is what you shall hear by your ear. Therefore, its vibrations, according to what you see and feel, is according to the thought, the power of sound, vibration of sound. That is your physical contact with all material world. The, this, the thought, is in the ethereal plane. It is a higher flow of energy. But if the thought and the sound are combined together, they bring into, an, into manifestation what you see and feel. They are in the exact proportion of the invisible nature of a thought and also the physical nature of that thought. 
Therefore, the sound is most important because thought and word, thought and word come together to manifest. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and God was that word, and that word was made flesh. God said, let there be light. God said. Here we have the whole truth. <coughs> that we see <coughs> that in the whole world today, we have an invisible nature, which in itself is the truer portion of ourselves. Well, the visible nature is brought about by a lower, slower vibration, so that it manifests on this particular plane. But the energy behind both is the same, exactly the same. Therefore, thought and word must move in cooperation and in conjunction with one another. If you speak with your tongue and your cheek, as the old saying is, <coughs> What is on my tongue is in my lung. It means to say that what's in my heart is in my mouth. Then it's accordance to the word of God. God said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the God was that word, and that word was made flesh. When did you talk with your tongue and your cheek? You're not cooperating with your thought and your words. Therefore, you create confusion. You think one thing and talk another, you create confusion. Therefore, beware of the fact that you are responsible for all confusion within your own sphere, and you are responsible for the confusion in the world because you are the world. The world is you and me, and many more lives. The diaphragm, the balus, is the lowest unit of the vocal apparatus. When the breath is inhaled, the diaphragm must move downwards towards the navel center. This causes the muscles of the whole area from the shoulders to the abdomen to expand. The bellus then, with the help of the movement of the contracting muscles, force the fire, that is, the breath exhaling, through the vocal cords which are set into vibratory motion. It then moves upwards through the resonating spaces in the face and head to produce the sound according to the note required. <coughs> Now, the word of creation we saw, we know perfectly well, is the word Om. But the word Om means a tremendous lot. Om means omnipotence. Om means omnipresent. And Om means omniscience. Om then means the totality of all things. And then the expressing of the word Om being the sound, or the matrix of all sounds in all creation, it is the fundamental and the foundation word for all creation. Every sound is made out of the Om. There is no sound that is not made out of the Om. It's the matrix of all sound. It is the basic sounds of every sound in creation. That Om can be found in the sea, in the shell, found in the trees, and the plants, and the birds, and the animals, and every single thing that exists, in the water. <coughs> There's a sound that has many, many notes, from a very base note to the very highest note, according to the vibration of the particular material in which it is manifesting. Therefore, it is the matrix of all sounds, and is the basic sound of creation. It is performed, of course, naturally, with the sound of the Om must be understood so that the full value of the force of the thought and the sound 
becomes manifest throughout the room or whatever the case may be. So if I was to sound the Om, I would have to sound it with an understanding. And my thought, and that which is behind my thought, <coughs> the creativeness would be in it. Therefore I would sound the Om knowingly, consciously aware of what I was doing. Oh. Oh. You actually feel the vibration of it passing through your bodies. It passes out through my body, out of the atmosphere, because my body is a sounding board. <coughs> so it carries the vibration throughout, from a feeling point of view, the sound of 700 miles an hour vibration, which is moving at that rate of vibration. At the same time, it carries with it the extraordinary fast vibration of 186,000 miles per second. It enters into the mind, passes through the very pores of the atoms of your body, into the very walls of your body, <clears throat> setting up a harmonious vibration which brings about peace and harmony. That is the secret of the expression of the word Om, not the ignorant idea that most people have just to sound the word Om and think that it's wonderful that they can sound it. But these people are ignorant of the true values. <clears throat> The master by Kai by controlling the prana, that is by holding the breath between inhaling and exhaling, can raise himself above the water and the ground because in this way the force of gravity is neutralized. The force of the prana held is not released and causes the body to become lighter. Therefore he holds the breath for a long time, letting it out slowly, and again he holds it more and more until such time as he finds, he finds his body becoming lighter and lighter because it's charged with this prana that is here. And because the prana being cold, because you know in the atmosphere prana is cold. Now after the prana passes into the body, it becomes fire. It is known to the master as fire. Then and they say fire. And you know what you mean by fire. Because here then the heat begins to rise to the cold and wants to escape to the cold. Therefore the body is attracted to the ether, attracted to the prana and not to the earth at all. It is attracted upwards. And with the power of his will he is able to move his body in space without any physical means whatsoever. Now you think I'm telling you a story, but I'm telling the actual God's truth. It's a power that you have within yourselves, but you definitely never know it to be true. You have never thought that it existed. And the fact that if you do not believe that it exists, you'll never be able to use it. Because of the fact, you can only find it out by knowing. There was an old man, an old, when I was a boy, there was an old Helen man there in our place at home. And, <clears throat> and William was his name, and everybody thought he was mad. We'd say, Chay over, I got William. And he would say, half a chai minute. He says, that's half a minute past a minute. That is to say, there's no time at all. And, in fact, there was no such thing to him as time. And the people were on their harvest, and down by the log side, harvesting the harvest. And here, William comes out of the forest, out of the trees, with a Bible on his head, and walks on the water. Here is William. He has a tremendous faith. 
which creates the same condition as one would create by a form of breathing. <coughs> now everybody stood still when they saw this taking place, and they could not believe it to be true, but it was true, all right. I was a boy at that time, and I witnessed the thing myself. But I knew perfectly well that there was something more to it than half a hitchai manage. That's guilt. I mean to say that's guilt. And when we, when I began as a youngster to know more about this, I knew intuitively that he had this knowledge and wisdom. He was a hermit, of course. But in the quietness of his own thoughts, he found out the law that was within himself. And not only that, but in the Himalayas, I've seen these things performed every day. There is nothing to it. It is said to be very, very simple, and it is simple. <clears throat> the Master cannot will in this way, also automatically control the pulsation of the heart. In this way, also suspend animation. Suspended animation is obtained. The breath, the beat of the heart, and the brain centers are modified by the thinking process, which all work with mathematical precision. It is known that a variation of the normal procedure of respiration creates a change in of polarity and a change of vibration in all the cells of the body, particularly the brain and nerve cells. The mind and the body being can be regenerated and charged with prana or an electromagnetic energy by rhythmic breathing accompanied by relaxation and tension of the whole body. <clears throat> relaxation and tension consciously performed amplify the attraction and repulsion principle. It gives it more power, which is the same thing that takes place in your body. Your, your, your what we call breathing, ex inhaling and exhaling, is none more than that particular thing is the attraction and repulsion. Now, in attraction, you would think that the attraction is the pulling in of the breath, but it is not. The attraction is the outgoing breath because the breath is fire, and it must go out, and therefore it is attracted to the cold. <coughs> Hot water will always rise to the surface. For you're boiling a kettle, and the kettle can be boiling, but, uh, but still, if there's any cold water in the kettle, it can be boiling. But if you put any cold water in the kettle, that cold water will go immediately to the bottom, and you can put your hand in the bottom of the kettle, and it will be cold. The heat rises to the surface, always, and therefore that is the fire, and that is known as the positive breath, and not the negative breath, as many people think. It is known as the apana current, and not the prana current. I'll get to that shortly. <clears throat> There's so much scientific knowledge in this thing that I can't give you it all at once because it's so extraordinary, difficult to comprehend. With, with my words, I'm putting them as simple as I possibly can so that you can understand them. Now, relaxation and tension consciously, consciously performed amplify the attraction and repulsion principle. Herein lies the profound secret which I have used in hundreds of depleted cell structure of the body caused by wrong breathing, and which is responsible for 90% of chest troubles. If people will only pay attention to what I've got to say, and follow out the instructions, but no, they will not, because they're too stupid to understand. When the mind is clear, there is no vicious circle in operation, so the body becomes clear also. The brain and body begin to function as they were intended to do. And the life principle charges the 72,000 nerve circuits. The mind and body gain bigger and are refreshed, and the brain cells are oxygenated and so become peaceful. Now, the masters know that there are 72,000 nerve circuits in the body, and they know every one of them. 
That is how their knowledge is even greater than your greatest professor or your most renowned specialist. There is no longer any conflicting thought waves to disturb the surface of the subtle magic pool of ether. The nerve plexus and vital currents become rhythmic and gain uniform momentum and uniform polarity. The conscious and the subconscious are united in one electrified magnet, expressing one wave of peace and harmony, and no disturbing reactions are experienced. That is a state that you can have now. The mind is no longer aware This lesson needs three nights. <laughs> <laughs> the mind is no longer aware of the body because harmony has been established there and it knows freedom and peace. In the silence there is the radiating beauty of the spirit's one mode of action, love. All chattering thoughts have disappeared and the soul is illumined and the jewel that separates the darkness from the light disappears. Here then is clear sea. You, as otherwise say, you break through the darkness into the vision barrier where all things are visible to you. The vibrations of the individual are raised so much that the light vibrations that are passing through, passing through matter which you do not see, are reflected from a higher substance of ether, a more uh, etherized substance of ether that reflects them. Therefore, you see objects and light that you do not see with the physical eye because of the rate of vibration of your sight. <coughs> this is the beginning of pranayama, <clears throat> the control of prana or universal energy. The law underlying all physical and mental action is shown in the following paragraphs. The first thing to understand is that the breath of life which sustains every living thing, including mankind, operates on the same fundamental electromagnetic principle as that which produces motion in the whole universe. Attraction and repulsion, which is inherent in every atom. In every atom you have this propulsion and attraction, attraction and propulsion. It is electromagnetic in its nature, and is the foundation of everything that exists in the water, in the glass, in this, in the flower, in the tree, in the chair, in your body, that everything existing today is electromagnetic in nature, repulsion and attraction. Your breathing is the same thing, exactly the same motion. It is, the, it is the activity of the universe. It is a fundamental activity of the universe, and when understood, you can see what a powerful thing it can be. When the first breath of the child that is born, there is firstly a, a, the inspiration of the breath, the cool air in which the prana or universal energy is encased is drawn down. The muscles expand, then the internal force of energy pressing from all sides causes exhalation. The hot air is attracted upwards and is attracted to the cool source of prana. Thus, a subtle motor of life revolves night and day through propulsion and attraction without cessation. Everyone has their own rate of speed of the alteration of attraction and repulsion. This speed of ratio can be altered by altering the speed and function of inspiration and respiration, repulsion and attraction. It's electromagnetic in nature in a larger scale, as the very atom and <coughs> exists in the water, <coughs> or in this table, or in this piece of chalk. Jesus, with his power of understanding of the electromagnetic vibration, was able to change the water into wine. It was a simple process for him to do, but it's scientifically true. There's a sci scientific basis behind it all. A 
that is a transformation of one substance into another, knowing the quality and the rate of vibration of one thing and another. But the Master knows these intuitively because it's inherent in every human soul, in you and me. Only you have not allowed that knowledge and wisdom to come out because the self has prevented it. <clears throat> With the change in speed of the alternating ratio <coughs> of inha inhalation and exhalation, there is produced a corresponding change in the polarity of the body cells, particularly those of the brain and nervous system, which produces marked change in the vibratory motion of the body cells because the brain and the nervous system controls every cell in the body. Without you having a dendron, small nerve, into every cell in the body, that cell would die. Therefore, it is through the brain that this prana passes, and through the nerve current, nerve socket, it passes through into every cell of the body. Therefore, that cell in the body is fed with prana that passes through your brain, passes through the nervous socket, and it comes from the top of the head, in through these particular centers, down through this area, down the spine. That's why the spine is the most important part of the body. <coughs> now here comes the great secret. The change of polarity of the brain cells and the mental activity of the individual are interrelated and react upon each other. So the polarity of the human magnet can be reversed at will. So now here comes the great secret of levitation, which I am revealing to you. I am doing so with the advice that such an exercise should not be practiced at present. There are both the positive polarity and the negative polarity, which is represented by exhalation and inhalation. Exhalation, as we saw, is the attractive breathing because of its heat. It is attracted to the cold. Therefore, positive polarity can be induced by preventing the inhalation of the breath after exhalation. This is known as the control of the apana current. The lungs empty. Negative polarity can be induced by inhaling and restraining further exhalation. This is known as control of the prana current, the lungs full. It is the attractive prayer. The other is the force, the, the prana forcing itself into the individual. That is why it is said that the master in exhalation is one of the greatest health-giving things that is possible. Why? Because it not only eliminates all the gases of the lungs, but it also enables the force of the prana itself to pour through the very cells of the body. That is the positive prayer. Now the Earth's gravity can be overcome by reversing one's polarity. Thus the reversing of the magnetic polarity is supported by the change in the mental vibration, by mental vibratory motion. And this will produce levitation. The change in the mental vibration will be a consciousness of light or lightness. This is the secret between, uh, behind the long pom pom man of Tibet. He travels hundreds of miles with ease. He strides, he takes from 30 to 40 feet in length, and he traverses the mountain as easily as he does the flat. Hence, man can walk and will eventually walk in the air by counteracting the Earth's gravity through a change in his magnetic polarity and mental conceptions of weight. We will one day through the atomic structure of the body, be able to use a certain mechanism, a machine, that will flow, uh, arise from the earth by itself, without any means of propulsion, but by, even by the magnetic or the electromagnetic function that is within itself. It will be attracted to, it will create a certain amount of heat within itself in the atoms. So therefore it will be expand the atoms so that the atoms will become light and be attracted to the higher states of the material and we will find we'll be able to fly through the air 
at thousands of miles a minute. <clears throat> Perhaps that's what is happening on the earth today. How do you know that, <clears throat> that some other planet hasn't found the secret? The earth is known to be a huge magnet which rotates on its own axis and revolves round the sun under the law of attraction and repulsion, holding all atoms as well as all that inhabits it together through the powerful magnetic force we call gravity. <clears throat> the same law of positive and negative polarity operates in every human being and everything that exists down to the very individual atom. This electromagnetic principle operates throughout every particle of matter known to man. <clears throat> The consciousness of man is the ruling factor in every atom of substance. And therefore the master knows more than the ordinary human being. And then he has control of the very atoms and which, which we know as prana. <clears throat> Jesus was known to move himself from within the crowd to another place and no one knew how. Yet he knew the law of reversing the polarity of his body. And someday, perhaps, not in the very near future, but it will come when man will begin to understand the powers that are inherent within himself. Jesus said, these things I do. Greater things will you do, if you will but understand. It is well known that electricity and magnetism are interchangeable. In fact, that is what is happening continuously in our lives here and now although we know nothing about it, nor do we know what is taking place incessantly. Our physical system is largely dependent upon the action of our mind. And if our mind is well regulated and understood, so that the mind becomes clear of confusion, which is destructive to the body as well as preventing our inherent powers from acting, miracles can be performed. I am certain that Jesus knew of these secrets, which are the direct action of a law that existed. Just as man has come upon the law of electricity, so man come upon the laws used by Jesus. And other masters I know at the present time who are acquainted with them. <clears throat> it is well known to scientists that if a change in electric polarity from negative to positive should take place, Man's relation to the Earth's magnet would then become repellent, and gravity for him would cease to exist. <clears throat> and that, I believe, is what's happening. If these, what we call saucers, you hear today, is any truth in them whatsoever, I'm convinced that that is what is taking place, a change in the electric polarity of the atom. That is, in that substance, which is causing it by the combination of other substances, to create this condition. And that, one day, we will find out in this world too. <clears throat> the laws exist. And someday, we will find them out. The attitude... The altitude, then, of his levitation would be measured by his ability, in a greater or less degree, to charge his body with positive electricity. If with this control over the physical forces are obtained, alternation of his levity or gravity would be as easy as breathing. So your movement would be as easy as breathing. As Jesus moved so lightly and so swiftly out of the crowd, and no one knew how it was done. As he walked upon the water, no one knew how it was done, but he did it. This is such a very engrossing and enlightening subject, and we'll continue it in our next lesson. By understanding the relative activity of the universe, we'll become more aware of that which is behind it all. In the fourth watch of the night, he went to them, walking on the sea. But when his disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, 
and shriek for fear. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Courage, he said. It is I have no fear. Matthew 14, 25, 26, 27. Mother translation. Jesus knew the secret. And as masters do, so it is inherent in every human being. As man will grow into greater understanding, so will he become as a master of nature. <coughs> Benediction. <coughs> o wondrous one, thy nature inherent in me has revealed how wondrous I am made. Thou hast come to earth in the form of man, and it was Jesus thy son who revealed thee to me. Since then, O wondrous one, I have searched and found that I am one with thee. As I grow out of my illusion of the separate self, I find more and more the splendor of thy inheritance that thou hast given to me. And as I search, it is further revealed to me. With all my heart and soul full of gratitude, is nothing compared with the wealth that thou hast given me. O wondrous one. <clears throat> Listen now.